This is part two of calculations that you would need for some molecular biology protocols. This one's going to look at using concentrated stock solutions. So an introduction to the idea of a concentrated stock solution is this orange juice right here. Maybe you've used it before where you buy the can of frozen concentrate and you put that concentrate into a pitcher and then it tells you to get three cans full of water and add those three cans of water to the pitcher. So the total volume is four cans worth of volume one volume of the four is concentrate. So you could also look at it over here on the label. They say that uh, it's 12 ounces of concentrate in this can, but it makes 48 fluid ounces total. So if you simplify that by dividing both of those by 12, you get one out of four. For every one fluid ounce of concentrate, you'll have four fluid ounces total. In molecular biology, we would refer to that as a four times concentrate or 4x concentrate. And our label on the container would actually say that out front, that this would be four times or 4x concentrated orange juice. So here's some examples of ones that actually get used in a lab. This one says 20x TAE buffer, so it's 20 times concentrated. This one says 50x, so it's 50 times concentrated. We like to buy our buffers this way because we're not paying for the water and we're not paying to ship all the water. We can just dilute it ourselves using water or whatever other reagents it calls for. So we have to just make sure we look at the X to know how many times concentrated it is and understand that that means that one part out of those 10 parts, if it's 10 parts con or 10 times concentrated, uh, one part would come out of the bottle. So there's two types of dilution calculations, ones where you don't know the total volume and where you do. The ones where you know the total volume is if you're just making a solution using a concentrate. Maybe a protocol calls for 250 milliliters of a buffer. You know the total volume. The kinds where you don't know the total volume are if you already have something and you need to add to it some concentrate. And I'm going to show you an example of each one. For the ones where you do know the total volume, you would be setting up an experiment or making a solution. So in this instance, I'm just talking about maybe doing a restriction enzyme digest. So the restriction enzyme buffers say 10x on them, so they are 10 times concentrated. We would know by looking at the protocol what the total volume of the reaction would be. In this case, it says 50 microliters total. So you would need to figure out how much of this buffer you would need in microliters. So if we picture it the same way we pictured the orange juice, we've got 10 total parts because this is a 10x concentrate and one of those parts is our buffer over here. So what we would do is say, well, if the total volume is 50 microliters, I'm going to divide that into the 10 parts. So 50 divided by 10 would give us that the parts are 5 microliters each. Well, if one of those parts out of all 10 needs to be buffer, then it would be 5 microliters of your buffer. The second type of problem where you don't know the total volume is mostly used with this guy right here, purple loading dye. It is 6x concentrated. And what we use this dye for is we add it to a DNA sample so that we can load it into an agarose gel. So you have the reaction already done. In this example, we've got a PCR reaction that has a volume of 25 microliters. Well, before we can put that in a gel, we have to add loading dye. Otherwise, the DNA won't sink down into that well. So we have to calculate how many microliters of that loading dye we would add. So since this one is 6x, if we think of that same type of picture, we have six total parts. One of those parts is going to be dye. Well, the thing is, we don't have all six parts. We have all but one. So in this case, we have five of the parts right here in the PCR reaction, and we're going to have to add one more part, which is dye. So if I have 25 microliters, and those are five of my parts, divide that out and I get five microliters for each part. So that means I'm going to need five microliters of dye that I would add to my reaction.